Hey, good morning guys. So glad you could join me in my studio today. My name is Mrs. Sternad, and today we are going to be making some watercolor cactuses. So um, some supplies that you are gonna need are a piece of paper. Um, I'm using mixed media paper, but you can use watercolor paper. You could use um, cardstock if you don't have any of that. Um, but you have some computer paper at home, that will work as well. Um, masking tape is optional, but um, it's good to tape our edges. We're gonna need a pencil, a Sharpie, um, and a paintbrush, and then a set of watercolors, and I have several different kinds. Um, it doesn't matter. Whatever you have will be perfect. And then salt. Some things I want you to think about today as we create. Um, always draw light until you get it right. That way you can erase. Um, we're not wasting paper. Um, it's just a good rule of thumb. And some of the key concepts we're gonna talk about today are we're gonna learn how to draw a 3D vessel. Um, we're gonna have varying heights, so that means some things are gonna be really, really short and some things will be tall. We're gonna do um, some overlapping. We're gonna focus a little bit on texture and pattern. And of course, we're gonna always try to use good craftsmanship. Let's get started. All right, so um, I got my paper, I got my pencil, so I'm ready to get started. We're gonna start out by drawing um, our vessel. Now, a vessel is the bowl or the um, pot that we are gonna put our succulents in. Um, so your, your vessel does not have to look like mine. Um, if you want to um, create your own, that is totally fine. That is totally fine. So to start with, I'm going to draw really light, remember? And I'm going to draw the opening of my pot. Then I'm going to come down and I'm going to get my sides. Just like that. And then we want to connect those lines. Now, yours can be round, square, rectangular, um, whatever you want. There's no wrong or right answer. And then I'm gonna divide my vessel into three parts. You can do three, one, two, five, whatever you want. And then we're going to create pattern. Remember I used that word pattern? So you can do whatever kind of design that you want on your pot but we're gonna create three different patterns. Or five, I guess, if you have um, more. And it can be anything. Just use your imagination. The only thing I will warn you is we have to trace everything with a Sharpie when we're done. So if you get too crazy with your pattern, you'll have a lot of tracing. put something else in here kind of make it a little more festive now if you need to pause the video because you're not ready to go on that's fine do that because a lot of time these videos go so fast um, and you're trying to process what we're saying so if you need to pause you go right ahead and pause the video all right now I am going to um, start drawing some of my succulents and I'm gonna show you some examples real fast. These are a few examples of some succulents that you could add in your pot. If you wanted to uh, maybe have some more variety, you could get on Google or have your parents help you on Google and you can type in succulent clip art or cactus clip art and you can probably get some more ideas. Okay, so we are going to work on um, thinking about overlapping when we uh, put our cactuses in. So overlapping is um, when we know something is in front of something or something is behind it. So we're gonna use overlapping to create depth. 
Um, we are also going to um, think about varying heights. Varying heights means that some things are really, really tall and some things are really, really small. Okay, so let's get started. I'm going to start with my center cactus first. And you don't have to draw the same one as me. That's fine. Um, and actually, I might... Um, Oh no, this is fine. We can do this. And this is what we call contour lines. We're just drawing the outline of our cactus. Um, it's kind of like, I tell my students, it's like a coloring book. Just the outline. That way we can color it in later. And once again, you're probably drawing, you should be drawing light until you get it right. That way, if you need to erase, you can. I'm drawing a little darker than normal, um, just because that way you guys can see it on the camera. Um, otherwise, if I draw really, really light, it's kind of hard to see what I'm doing. Okay. Um, now, you can use one of the cactuses um, from the board, or you can come up with your own. I'm going to do... A little Christmas cactus in the corner over here and they kind of have a little bit of a heart shape and then they bloom around Christmas time that's why they're called a Christmas cactus I have a Christmas cactus in my house but it hasn't bloomed for the last few years and Christmas cactuses they're not really pokey but they have little dots on them lot of height here so maybe I want to do something a little shorter so I'm going to do a little round cactus over here put my little spiny things on there and if you don't want to put a bloom on your cactus these are little blooms if you don't want to put blooms on them you don't have to a sharpie and I'm going to outline all of those pencil marks. Okay, now we are ready to get out your paints and like I said, you can use, um, you know, whatever you have laying around. That's no problem. Um, now, if you don't have a color that, um, like pretty much most of you probably only have one green in your paint box, and we don't want to have um, our cactus all the same color of green. So in your lid up here, um, you should have some spots. You can tell I do a lot of mixing in mine. Um, and if they're dirty, you can take like a wet paper towel or a baby wipe and you can wipe that out. But you can mix your colors up here in the lid. All right, so we're gonna start with um, one of our cactuses. And remember, your cactuses don't have to be the same color as mine. You can paint your cactuses any color that you want. The thing we wanna think about or remember with when we're using watercolor is it's called watercolor, which is colored water, okay? So your paint should be pretty thin. It should look wet. Um, again, that's because it's called watercolor. It should be water. It should be translucent. If you're wanting your paint to be really thick, um, you should be using acrylic because acrylic is pretty dark and, and thick. Okay. Now, if you want to mix some different colors of green, some things that you can do is if you want to lighten your green, you can add yellow. 
And if you're wanting to darken your green and kind of get like a teal color, um, you could add blue to that color. So kind of just have some fun playing with color here. And we're gonna paint your masterpiece in. And you can even mix colors if you wanted. That's a good example of Mrs. Sternag on way too much paint, not enough water. So how I can fix that is I just go and get a whole bunch of water on my brush and I can move that around. See how that works? Now, if you wanna add some texture, there's that fun word, texture, to your painting, what you can do is if you have um, some salt at home, you can put a little bit of salt in your hand and then you can sprinkle that onto your watercolor. Now, if you're not using watercolor paper um, or you're not using mixed media paper, sometimes this doesn't work as well. Like um, watercolor paper and mixed media paper has um, little pockets like texture that it takes up moisture in, so it will create a visual texture on there with the watercolor. Um, if you don't, if you're using computer paper, it probably won't work, but you are more than welcome to try it. Um, fun to, ex to experiment. Um, and then I'm going to paint my little flower blooms kind of a pink. Now if you don't have pink in your watercolor box, how do you make pink? Um, pink is white and um, Once you have it all painted, now we're ready to work in our background. So you may choose a color that you would like to put back there. I think I'm gonna work in blue. So um, let's go ahead and get started. And I forgot to mention um, before I started painting the background, I put water down first. So in the beginning, you'll see me just getting my paper wet. That's because I want my background um, to be fluid, which means wet, like to look. Um, and I, and if, you're, if your watercolor is kind of dry, it will leave weird marks in the background. So I like to do my whole background in water, then drop my color in. Um, and that's what you saw me do. Now what we're gonna do is wait for this little guy to dry and then we'll be able to uh, peel up the tape and see what we got. 